Larry Sparks here with Voice of Destiny. It's not every day you can sit down with Rick Renner and Robert Henderson and talk about apostles and prophets. But candidly, I, I, you know, I just came up to Rick and said, would you be part of this conversation? Because I believe God is doing something very unique right now in the body of Christ. We need to understand the functionality and the operation of both the apostolic and the prophetic. We need to have clarity so that they know how to navigate these uncertain and swirly waters that we're dealing with right now in culture. So Robert, I want to just dive right on into you where the Lord has really put it on your heart to see a real reconciliation between apostles and prophets. Share, share your vision behind what God's doing right now. Yeah, we started an organization, our, you know, we, we call it an organization, uh, called Global Roundtable of Apostles. We had an initial meeting. Say that again, called what? A, a Global Roundtable of Apostles. Okay. And so we, we um, had an initial meeting in Singapore this last year, had, had apostles from four different um, continents that came in to be a part of that. Um, because I really felt like the Lord said that we were to do that, and we were to, we would reconvene apostles from many different streams. In other words, not trying to build an apostolic network, we're trying to bring in apostles that lead apostolic networks yes, yep. from varying streams, and be able just to listen to each other and see what each other's saying, whether we agree or disagree. Mm. And so, so you know, that's what we that's what we did. But then, out of that, this April second meeting. Uh, came about because of an apostle friend of mine actually contacted me and said that he felt like the apostolic movement had stall, stalled. Uh, and that one of the reasons it had stalled was because there was a breach between apostles and prophets. Of course, uh, Ephesians 2.20 says that the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And, and, and understanding that those two ministry gifts are supposed to significantly work together. Uh, yeah. uh, and that when they do, I actually believe it, bring, it brings a release of, of authority in the earth that we probably don't get in any, uh, any other way. Well, let me say this because I, I want to go to you and I want to hear, because you've written this amazing book, Apostles and Prophets. Thank you. But it's interesting, when we're talking about apostles and prophets, those are probably the two most controversial of the fivefold ministry. They're, they're not understood. That's exactly it. For example, the apostolic gift. Again, you know, the call on my life really is apostolic. That's what I've done in Russia. Yeah. But most people really don't even know what the word apostle means. Yes. And so people wear like a badge of respect that they're pioneers or they're, they've been a leader in some area of ministry. That does not make you an apostle. Mm. To be an apostle is very specific. And so I wrote my book because I felt like there was a lot of confusion. Yeah. And the apostolic gift is real. And when there's a lot of abuse of a term, it really diminishes the real. Yes. And I just felt like we needed to help understand what is an apostle, what is a prophet, and just bring clarity. And that was the purpose of my book. Now, let me ask you this, and I'll ask both of you. Why is it so important that apostles and prophets work together? And what, do you, what does that look like? When a, because I, I at least notice I'm the publisher of Destiny Image. We publish the prophets. And sometimes apostles and prophets don't really work very well together, unfortunately. But why is that problematic, and how can they work effectively together, Robert? What well, I, I think I think uh, that um, again, like Rick just said, the, the the realm of the apostle has been so misunderstood because so I, I've even heard it referred to well, if somebody's a missionary on a mission field, that, that makes them an apostle. It but does. It does not. It does not. It does not. It does not. Because to me, th what what has happened? Now, this is my understanding. Those, just, those, those can just be wonderful people yes, on a mission. That's yes. right. That's but that right. does not make them an apostle. An apostle. Because apostles operated until the day of, of Constantine. Mm. And when Constantine took over the church, if you will, uh, from the Roman perspective, basically apostles were replaced with pastors. And from that point on, there was a shift from an apostolic emphasis to a pastoral mm. one. Mm. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, 28, that the apostles were set first. Now, what I believe, I believe that when you look at Jesus' ministry, he only raised up apostles in his earthly ministry. He poured his life into 12 apostles so that in the upper room, the only recognized ministry gift in that upper room was apostles. Mm, that's true. And then all the other four came out of the apostles. Because God intended for his church to be apostolic. Because mm -hmm. the difference between the apostolic and the pastoral is the pastoral cares for people. That's wonderful. We need to have that. 
But the apostolic is all about the expansion of kingdom rule uh, into culture. 100%. And yeah. so that's, wow. that's, that's what, that's what dis- makes the distinction between the pastoral church that we primarily have today and the, pa- and the apostolic church yeah. that says we are here to establish the rule of God in the earth. Can I say something about please, the word apostle? Please. Yes. Well, the word apostle in its most ancient sense, apostolos, was the word for an admiral of a fleet of ships. And it was a very special fleet of ships, and he was the admiral. And on those fleet of ships were road builders, construction builders, educators, and they would set out for territory where no culture existed. They would disembark with his apostolic crew. That's what they were called. And once he exited the ship, the admiral became the scene leader to replicate culture as they thought it should be in a new place. And he brought with him all the builders. Yep. And so that's why you always see the Apostle Paul traveling with a group. He never travels alone. That's good. That's he, was the, he was the admiral with his fleet, and he was the team leader. And they all worked together to establish the life, the language, and the culture of the church where it never established before. And so what Robert just said is correct. It's about kingdom expansion, taking the church where it's never been. Mm. And that's why... Many of the greatest apostles, they're really not known. Yeah. Mm. They're living somewhere else. Mm-hmm. They're on the front lines. <laughs> they're not known. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have a TV ministry, that they are, they are expanding the kingdom, and they are absolutely authentic gifts. Yes. Well, let me, let me say this, because we know a lot of pastors who have maybe me- mega churches. Right. And not because they just, you know, sometimes they'll think, well, I have a mega church, I'm an apostle. But there are some where you can tell that that mega church, that large church, multiple campuses, and there's a real reculturization assignment they have for a territory. In other words, we've got multiple campuses, and you can tell that that pastor has a vision for a territory. They have vision to actually see the culture of heaven, influence, a region, a sphere of influence. W- would you say that maybe there are apostles, apostolic leaders out there who maybe are going by the title pastor right now, and they I think, don't know? I think you can be apostolic. Yeah. Without being an apostle. See, that's very interesting. What would be the delineation there? Well, I think an, an apostle is a gift, but you can have an apostolic heart. Mm-hmm. It's just like you can have a pastoral heart without being a pastor. Yeah. And uh, there are many pastors that really have an apostolic vision, though they may not stand in the office of an apostle. Wow. Some of them do. Yeah. Robert? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Ab- completely. Of course, all, we obviously agree on, on all of this. It's... it's um, um, I believe that the job of an apostle, the one, one of the ways that I teach it sometimes is you got the apostle that has the grace, and it's the grace of God that makes somebody be a, you know, an apostle or anything for that matter. But, but an apostle functions because of the grace they have. But then out of that grace, I think that that apostle, as Rick said earlier, there's a team that's developed around. That's correct. But then out of that team, there's an apostolic company of people. Mm-hmm. That's correct. That comes out of that team that now actually carries the uh, the that carries the apostolic authority, but the, all those people are apostles by any means. They're just apostolic in their nature. See, that's what I think Jesus did. They're part of the crew. That's right. See, I think that's what Jesus did when he set the twelve apostles first in principle, but then also in practice in the upper room. And then everything that came out of that was an apostolic church that literally had the power to turn the world upside down. Because, because of the authority that they carried in the Lord. But I think in the same way today, there's a lot of people who call themselves prophets yeah. that are prophetic, yes. but they're not prophets. That's right. And I think because of that, there's a lot of confusion, especially on YouTube. Oh, my goodness. I mean, you've got to be so careful about everybody who... Ta- I think if the Apostle Paul were alive today... Oh, my goodness. In Saul, everybody who calls himself an apostle or a prophet, I think he would say, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just sincere people who maybe don't fully understand what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. But there's the real prophetic gift. There's the real apostolic gift. And I'm so glad you're having this meeting in April. Yeah, and you know, the thing, too, about that is that is that when Paul chose Silas, it's, that's what it says in Acts 15, Paul chose that. The word chose there means to surname. Mm. And I've often thought that a, a, a prophet will usually never reach their full sense of identity mm. and purpose until they're connected correctly to the apostolic. Mm-hmm. Not, not that the apostolic has rulership over, over yeah. giftings. I mean, we're all called by God and underneath his authority, but, 
But when Silas was chosen by Paul, again, that word means to surname. I think that there was a sense of identity that came into Silas's life and it, and, and actually took, took who he was to an entirely different level. Mm. And that's why I think that apostles and prophets working together is so imperative. I, I, I try not to take the analogy too far, but when, but when Jesus came to John uh, at the River Jordan, clearly John was a, was a prophet. But let's just say for sake of argument, we know Jesus is all five of the five full minutes. He for, sure is. But the Bible says he is the apostle and high priest of our, of our calling, of our, of our high calling in Hebrews 3. So let's just, for the sake of argument, say that Jesus would be the ultimate apostle. John was a prophet. But when they came together, nobody was striving for mastery. Mm-hmm. They, they were actually arguing over who was going to get to be the least. Oh, uh, yeah. And that spirit of, de- of, defer- be- of deferring to each other actually caused the heavens to split open. Mm. And you see this with Paul and Silas when they would go into regions. When that apostle yeah. prophet mix happened, there would be a rending of the heavens that let the kingdom of God begin to be established in those regions through churches being raised up and and but it all came out of the apostolic prophetic authority that Paul and Silas carried together with each other. That's why I think apostles and prophets working together is so essential. I think they're very completing of each your the one is not fully complete without the other. Yes. I would I, I think an apostle can yes until the others are raised up operate in all five. But eventually there comes a moment when Paul and Silas need yes. to come along. That's outstanding. Well we, we could honestly do this all day, but I do want to encourage people to get a real intensive, um, uh, just exhaustive compilation of this material. Apostles and Prophets is really one of the best books I've read on well, the subject. Well, thank you. Thank you. To GRA, Global Roundtable of Apostles. Yes, and we're calling it Reconnecting uh, Apostles and Prophets. The, it, it is going to be, uh, and especially this, excuse me, this is for Apostles and Prophets yes. giftings. Um, we're not trying to, we're, we're not, we're not scrutinizing saying, oh, you're not, you're, we're, yeah, we're yeah. saying at this stage, if you feel like that you fit into one of those, the website is yep. grapostles.org. Grapostles.org. Yeah. And we are looking forward to seeing the amazing work the Holy Spirit's going to do, I believe, in bringing the apostolic and the prophetic together. Robert, Rick, thank you so much. Thank for you, Larry. Appreciate it. Good to be here. Thank you, guys.